from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Walter, Irvin, and Michael Sotka from Scarborough and Markham, Ontario. This Mass is being offered in celebration of their mother Elizabeth on her 96th birthday. She is a faithful viewer of the daily televised Mass. This Mass is also being offered in memory of their own father, Adam, who had died, and also for the living and deceased members of the Sotka and Duhachuk families. Our thanks go out to Walter, Irvin, and Michael for the gift of this Mass and a very happy birthday, 96 years of faithful service on behalf of their mother, Elizabeth. As we prepare ourselves now to celebrate this Eucharist, let us ask the Lord to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasure of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea and four great beasts coming up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I watched, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a human being and a human mind was given to it. Another beast appeared, a second one that looked like a bear. It was raised up on one side, had three tusks in its mouth among its teeth and was told, Arise, devour many bodies. After this, as I watched, another appeared like a leopard. The beast had four wings of a bird on its back and four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the visions by night a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth, and was devouring, breaking in pieces and stamping what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that preceded it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns when another horn appeared, a little one coming up among them to make room for it. Three of the earlier horns were plucked up by the roots. There were eyes like human eyes in this horn, and a mouth speaking arrogantly. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. 
I watched then because of the noise of the arrogant words that the horn was speaking. And as I watched, the beast was put to death and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. As I watched visions in the night, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Give glory and praise to the Lord forever. Let the earth bless the Lord. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, mountains and hills. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Give glory and praise to the Lord forever. Bless the Lord, all that grows in the ground. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, seas and rivers. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Give glory and praise to the Lord forever. Bless the Lord, you whales and all that swim in the water. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all birds of the air. Sing praise to him and kindly exalt him forever. Give glory and praise to the Lord forever. is near at hand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to his disciples about the end which is to come. He told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> About three weeks ago, 
the children were out trick-or-treating on Halloween day. And during that weekend, because Halloween fell on a Sunday, during that weekend, they showed all the horror movies, Freddy Krueger, Friday the 13th, Chuck, Chucky, and uh, scary movies. These are not my cup of tea, and so even as the ads came along, trailers came along, I would switch channels. But our story of Daniel in the rule of King Baalthazar would have fitted beautifully into this story. Yesterday we heard of Daniel under King Darius of Babylon. Today we hear of Daniel under his successor, Behelzadar of Babylon as well. And we hear these three weird animals that are called by name, a lion, a bear, a leopard. And if you look at them, they're not like the ones you and I will see in the zoo or in wild. They are weird and grotesque. The lion has four wings. The bear has three tusks in its mouth. The leopard has four wings and four heads. We've never seen anything like this. But they represented the enemies of the people of Israel. They represented Babylon, which is in present-day Iraq, Medes, which is in the northern Iran, and Persians in southern Iran. In those days, Iraq and Iran were fighting one another, and at this time, Babylon had conquered the whole of Iran, and therefore, any edicts that were made in Babylon were also applicable, as we heard yesterday, from in the Medes and in the Persians. So what do these beasts tell us? Well, they frightened the enemies, uh, they frightened the Israelites to such an extent that they began to doubt. Has God forgotten us? Has God abandoned us? Does God no longer keep the covenant? If God is on our side, then how do the enemies seem to work and conquer us over and over again? And these enemies also brought a sense of fear. Would they come into the sacred city of Jerusalem and destroy our temple? It did happen much after the time of Daniel. But we noticed there was a fourth beast, and he hasn't been identified with anything you and I have seen. He's simply called the terrible beast because at that time, while this was being written, they were still the enemy, and they still threatened the Israelites. They were the Greek empire. Now, the Greeks were indifferent to the Israelites. They're just another tribe, another place in the conquest of the world. They were going to conquer Egypt and go all the way past Iraq and Iran to India. But there was something in that beast. We are told it spoke with an arrogant mouth. And that was referring to one of the satraps of the Greeks called Antiochus Epiphanes IV. He really was arrogant. He really put doubt into the minds of the people. And you can hear the story and read the story in the book of Maccabees. He put doubt saying, the Lord, your God has no power and I will see that you are conquered. He went into the temple and desecrated it. He took their gold, he took their sacred vessels, he brought down the altar, he sacrificed pagan idols, the pig, on the altar. Can you imagine the abomination of desolation? They were absolutely terrified. And yet, the story of Daniel is a story of comfort as we read to the very end. The Ancient of Days will come. He will sit on his throne, and he will bring judgment. Actually, the judgment was merely a political thing anyway. Babylon had extended itself, the Medes had extended themselves, the Persian had extended themselves. They were so thin on the ground that they imploded. But the Israelites didn't see it like that. The Israelites saw the hand of God protecting them and taking care of them. And now the Israelites would see in Antiochus Epiphanes, the fourth that was the terrible beast, even he would be destroyed. And if you read the book of Maccabees, we realize that 
When he himself was frightened, he ran away, and his commander, Lysias, was taken over by Judas Maccabeus. It is a story of comfort. As we go to the gospel, we have another story of comfort. But the metaphor is so different from the four terrible beasts. The metaphor is that of a fig tree. And if you go to Israel and you see the fig trees, they are so comforting. They are so tasty. Whether you go down towards Masada, come up to Jericho, go up into Galilee, they give you strength and hope. And you and I know as we get into winter, everything is so desolate. I live in Pickering, and the salmon have stopped running in Duffins Creek. But every morning, a deer with some fawns come, two or three of them. And as I look at them, I realize the winter, no matter how bitter it is, will not last because the sign of God is right there in the deer and the fawns. You and I have to open our eyes and see this message of comfort. God bless you all. Let us now pray together. Let us pray for all those who are, whose names are mentioned in the memorial book of remembrance, for all our faithful departed, that the Lord may give them eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our sponsors of this Mass, for Walter, for Irvin, and for Michael Sotka, and especially for their mother, Elizabeth, who celebrates her 96th birthday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for all our sponsors of the daily televised Mass who continue to pray and support us, both financially and with their prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord and finally, for hope as we get into winter to realize that it will not last forever and spring will come again, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of the season, and we thank you for the gift of hope through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and through it the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created us in mercy, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices join with them as we acclaim. Holy
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have saved Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, bishops across Canada, all the clergy, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember Adam, Sotka, and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Wherever we are, let us share with one another a sign of that peace and friendship. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us join together in this prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.